Oh man, don't let them forget now. Do not let them forget. Too big to rig. Too big to rig, you guys. I hope everybody is blessed, man. That 2024 is treating you well. We're living in some crazy, disgraceful times right now, man. And we don't know what to expect next. As you can see, this has been one uh, very entertaining um, election. Um, there's something new almost every single day. Big things are happening, man. You know, we as we've seen, it's been a sh an actual show. You know, people dropping out. You know, you got people that haven't gotten one single vote. It's crazy, man. You know, the identity politics. And we're going to hear it all the way to November 5th. But it's going to be too big to rig, man. Assassination attempts. And we just got a huge RFK Jr. endorsement. And that endorsement showed unity, man. That endorsement had a big, big impact. You know, I know some of the mainstream media and some of the, uh, you know, the brainwashing media, or they want you to think this and that, this and that. And right now, the left, the Dems, they are shaking and panicking out their shoes right now. You know, um, that RFK Jr. endorsement was huge, you guys. And we got some more amazing polls, data, um, more... Uh, accurate map predictions um and i want to send a huge shout out to on point politics make sure y'all go down below and i'm going to pop it up on the screen subscribe to on point politics does an amazing this this fella here does an amazing job amazing drops amazing videos multiple videos every single day just as we do and very accurate very on point love his work so link will be in the description box down below make sure y'all check out on point Politics. I got to put up right here. Make sure you subscribe and check this fella out. Let Hello, you know everyone. You've seen him on OK Rick, and we are rocking and rolling, man. But too big to, to rig, you guys. Too big to rig. And we're gonna uh, check out and react to uh, this video. And they on point politics loves my channel um, as well. And again, we have, we are so connected with so many amazing creators. That you guys love as well on this platform, man. And we are all in a fight to get our country back, man. We have been waking up a lot of people. We've woken up a lot of never Trumpers, um, even people that wasn't even going to vote that are now voting, that are on the Trump train. You know, uh, we've talked to a lot of Democrats that are on the Trump train, and the tide is turning, man. Everybody's waking up. People are sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know. Under these liars, failures, these people are a disgrace, man. You know, and Joe Biden was as sharp as a tack. What you're seeing is a cheap fake, a deep fake. The woman hasn't got one single vote yet. And we have to hear identity politics all the way to November 5th. Black woman. I don't care if she's black, Chinese, Indian, Filipino, Latino. I don't care, man. If she's a woman. I, I don't care. Who is qualified to get the job done? And from what it looks like, communist comrade Kamala just ain't cutting it. I don't want your $25,000. Tampon Tim, I don't want your tampon. You know, $25,000 for our first time home buyers. And they just raised the price up about $40,000. Woo! You just can't make it up, man. It failed before and it will fail again. And as you can see, the Dems, they are there. They're, they're not even approving her um, economic plan. And uh, I, we believe she wasn't even supposed to uh, mention anything. They were supposed to wait until this was all over to, you know, dish out her policies and plans. You know, puppets. So, um, yeah. Well, let's go and jump in, you guys. Um from what we've looked, seen a lot so far, Trump is is even killing it even more now after uh, RFK Jr. suspended his campaign and is now, um, you know, has endorsed Trump and is going to be even um, going uh, campaigning actively with Trump. And um, there are going to be some more surprises we are going to hear possibly this week and more Democrats coming out to support Trump. Um, as we've seen in the recent interview with um, RFK Jr. when he uh, went on Fox. 
So this is going to get real interesting this next uh, week, you know, and then we're going to be close to, um, you know, getting close to voting early. But boy, we're going to see how this thing plays out. So shout out to On Point Politics. Let's go and jump in. We have another uh, very accurate predicting of this 2024 election. So let's go and jump in. Make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And again, make sure you go check out On Point Politics uh youtube channel and on x they post consistently on x um every single day as well so go on x twitter and follow on point politics we got to pull it up right here and let's go and jump into this amazing video you guys and check out what's going on and welcome back to another video with on point politics and today we're going to be looking at my national average average and seeing where the race stands as of right now Make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And so I have essentially created my mo my own moving average out of the current polling data that we have. But what I'm doing is I'm reweighing the numbers and I'm basically picking a target electorate. So kind of like how pollsters pick a target to weigh polls by, we essentially are picking a target to weigh all the national polling data that we get so that we can actually account for whatever polling error there possibly could be down the road. As you know, you know, like for example, 538, the polling errors there have been pretty abysmal. I mean, they had Biden up eight points in the popular vote, a little bit more than that, and he won it by half that margin. So their polling average is clearly not the best. And RCP was almost just as off. Now, RCP, from my understanding, tends to be a little bit more honest in terms of their aggregation, but what RCP isn't doing is weighing polls properly by party. That's like, they're just not doing that because that they don't- And we warned y'all about some, about a lot of, you know, tons of these polls, man. And y'all know how I say we, we shouldn't be looking at this and that. We shouldn't be looking at, you know, the polls and we can't get complacent and we encourage everybody to go out and vote we have to do our part man we have to do our part and then like i said some, most of these polls um are manipulated and they want people to think that harris is is more up than usual you know which is just it's just not true you know and then some of these polls you look at trump is really up an extra three four five points six points if we're being completely honest believe that that is a fundamental part of the process but i think this is actually going to really help you know me eliminate a, a any potential polling bias and could possibly make me the number one polling aggregator in the entire industry and if we look here you know we are picking a tight electorate like if, even if we get like a r plus one electorate which is possible like if that were to happen trump's margin of victory actually like really increases like he'd be up in the popular vote by like way higher even if the electorate is like r plus two you would have like a crazy popular vote victory for him he'd be up by like a little bit over five points if that happens so for the sake of the aggregator we are choosing to stick with a tight electorate unless there's a huge change like if trump if there's another assassination attempt i may boost the electorate by a point or if like trump has this really massive scandal i may boost it down a point like something really big would have to happen for me to change this target and to be honest with you i actually think the electorate's probably going to be r plus one to two but i'm using again, a prayers for trump in the comments you guys Prayers for Trump, RFK Jr. You know, we can go down the list, man. Vance, Elon Musk. I mean, it, it, you know, these fellas are against the system, man. And they want nothing but the worst to happen to them. I, I'll be honest with you. As you can see, there was just another, uh, 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 you know, attack threat that just took place when he went to visit, visit the border. So, uh, again, prayers in the comment section, man. Because we are living in times where we don't know what to expect next, you guys. And I've been telling you this for, you know, the last thousand videos we put out on this channel. We just don't know what to expect next, man. It's crazy right now.
Hyde electorate because it's a little bit fair and the electorate last cycle I mean here was only D plus one so I'm not even like reweighing the numbers that much really I'm really not and when you do that you get a pretty big Trump popular vote win of about 3.2% and we see here it's clearly evident over the course of about a three-day span here trump has effectively lost about half a point here uh and harris has kind of gained half a point and what's really going on is a lot of the polling data that we had uh kind of fell out of the average there were a couple polls that fell out of the average that probably were a little bit more pro trump polling because of the fact that you know in the beginning of the trump harris race he had way better polling numbers and some of those figures are starting to fall out of the polling data that's why you may see you know numbers like this where you know he's kind of going down now i did remove uh some polls from the aggregate today because they expire today uh so when i upload the average for tomorrow you know you get the new numbers and so far in the new average Average, Trump is up 47.5 so he gains like 0.1 percent in the aggregate and Harris kind of gains uh, a little bit like 0.15 in the aggregate so she nets like a, a tiny little bit of, of a fraction but the race basically still remains the same trump is still up by 3.2 percent kennedy goes down a tiny bit the undecided go down and that's actually something important to point out undecideds have been going down in my average over the past couple days so that is interesting so it seems like harris has netted a couple of points and has also netted some points from third party candidates kind of falling in the average so that seems to be the case but trump you know kind of just rebounded to his august 24th numbers uh so far uh in the new average here so trump and harris have both been gaining and we may see a little bit of a weird cycle because d the dnc just happened so harris is going to inevitably gain in the polling data but at the same time trump got the kennedy endorsement which kind of sucks all of the energy out of the room and may possibly create a statistical wash and uh. i'm one of those people who believes that not all of kennedy support is going to go to trump maybe like 60 55 percent of it but definitely not uh that much to be honest with you and so we clearly see trump is still up in the popular vote by 3.2 percent and he's doing fairly well we are leaving kennedy in the average because i actually want to see where his support goes over time and so we can kind of track where it goes so if somebody's like oh harris actually gained from kennedy but we clearly see like trump, if trump goes up while kennedy goes down i can literally refute that and be like no that's not true trump's actually gained while kennedy's gone down uh and west and stein are not even polling at a combined one percent undecideds are going down so sort of people are kind of making up their minds but this really isn't going to be that much of a game changer really i mean the race is still trump's right now to be honest i mean if he's winning the national popular vote by that much that's a quite a big big of a win i mean you're talking about joe biden you know winning the popular vote last time by 40 you know 4.5 percent yeah. and trump's up by 3.2 percent that's like over a seven point shift nationally and so if that's the case i mean that basically puts you know states like you know iowa and ohio almost in the safe column because if the nationwide popular vote is going to trend to the right and I, as well shift to the right you know and iowa and ohio are going to trend to the right they're probably going to be over 15 point wins california would be safe still hawaii more than likely dc maryland you know massachusetts you know vermont these would still be in the safe column and maybe a state like new york possibly is still in the safe column very narrowly maybe rhode island is uh, that's one of the more democrat you know northeastern states but that's about it
I mean, that's really it. And uh, probably Florida right now, it's probably going to vote like 12 points to right of the nation. And so if that's the case, Trump probably does win that by over 15. I mean, Republicans had a, you know, early uh, primary and their electorate was R plus 14. Now, is that going to translate to election day? No, I might target of the electorates actually like R plus 12 for Florida right now. And our moving average for Florida actually has the state at like, I think about a 13 and a half point win for Trump. But that's, of course, including undecided. Decided, so that definitely wouldn't really uh, help out Harris there. So I think he probably does win it by over 15 points. And we look at a state like Alaska, that would be safe as well for, for Trump. Uh, Texas, this one's interesting because it's a little ambiguous as to where it's really going to trend because you have Hispanics moving to the right. You have the border, which is a really big issue. And that may push a state like Texas into the safe column depending on how hard it trends to the right but my feeling is that you know if you look here the state voted to the right of the nation by about 10 points and so if trump wins the popular vote by three that's about a you know roughly 13 point win but we don't know where the state's going to trend but my opinion is the state may actually trend back a point republican so you may see about a 14 point win in texas for trump but i mean trump did beat biden in primary turnout by quite a decent amount so i honestly wouldn't be surprised to see something like that a uh, Washington and Oregon. Which I'll, which I'll say, full, full blown red. <laughs> yeah, shut out. Yeah, y'all know, man. Y'all know I got to say something about my, my, my Texas, man. Come on now. But like I tell y'all, man, history is, is I, I believe, it's going to be too big to rig and that history is going to be done this election, y'all. And that this, this, this map might play out way different, you know. Then, then, then we know it. You know, I'm just saying. Again, it has to be too big to rig, man. And we know they're gonna try. Well, they're gonna try something. Oh boy. Oh. But it has to be too big to rig, and I believe it's gonna be some history made this year. You know. I don't want to speak too soon. I don't want to get complacent, but I, I believe it's going to be history made this year, y'all. We'll see. And we'll probably be in the higher, you know, 10 to 15 range, probably 13 to 14 point wins for Harris. Colorado is in that like 9 to 11 point range. Illinois is like at 8 to 11 point victory for Harris, New Jersey, Delaware, Connecticut fall under that 15 point range, but possibly not below 10. New Jersey may be a surprise state that trends to the right, kind of depends on the race. Now, Virginia is actually interesting. We'll get to that one in a second. Again, you know, North Carolina voted for Trump by 1.3%. And the state really hasn't trended anywhere. It's been pretty stagnant. So if Trump's winning the popular vote by three, he's probably on track to win North Carolina by possibly seven to nine points. And our moving average in North Carolina, funny enough, actually has a similar result. If we actually go to the moving average in a state like North Carolina right now, we'll actually see that Trump is up by about 6.8 percent in the state of north carolina so about a you know seven to nine point victory there georgia right now our moving average has it at like about 5.8 but if you know even if the state trends two points to the left which i don't really think that's going to happen if it's winning two points to right of the nation and trump's winning the popular vote by three uh plus five point popular vote victory in georgia would basically ensue so again that's interesting and arizona kind of the same thing i mean it probably does trend to the left as well but it may still be a likely margin of victory for trump because of hispanics because because of the border, because of the fact he's winning the popular vote by 3.2%. Uh, Nevada may be around a you know seven to eight point win for Trump in this case as well. And if you're looking at a state like Wisconsin, which is voting to the right of the nation by a pretty decent amount, actually by 3.8 percentage points, if the national popular vote's like a 3.2 percentage point win and the state continues to trend to the right, about a seven point victory may be on the horizon for Trump in Wisconsin. Now, Iowa's very interesting because they actually just had 
a state fair that occurred and they do you know political straw polls there and they tend to be a pretty good gauger of where the races are i mean trump in 2016 won the iowa state fair a uh, poll against hillary clinton by 11 points and he won the state by nine and some of the you know senate races some of the congressional races there the state polls or at least the state fair polls although they are unscientific tend to be a pretty accurate representation of where the electorate is at and the results just came out of the iowa state fair of trump versus harris and trump is actually beating harris here by 21 points in the state fair poll and 2020 we never got to get one because uh you know there was covid so we never really got to see the result of that would have been nice to see uh, a little bit of a kind of interesting result but trump realistically uh does underperform it a bit again it's an unscientific thing but it kind of gives you a good idea of where the gauge is so if we're assuming a 15 to 20 point win for trump in iowa that means that trump is winning the popular vote because effectively iowa and ohio would probably be 15 point victories in a tied popular vote regardless so if this is the case then trump is probably in fact winning the popular vote right now i mean if you would have looked at that iowa poll i mean uh, the state fair poll you would have basically assumed that it would have been like a tied popular vote possibly which is not that far off from clinton plus two and, and again it was a little bit earlier on during the cycle and then you kind of had the whole trump hollywood tape so that may have actually hurt him in iowa there uh, so that's pretty fascinating to see that he was beating Hillary by 11 uh, but either way you know I just wanted to mention that because those who say oh Iowa is going to be like an eight point victory or for whatever reason fucking 538 has Trump huh, winning Iowa by less than what he had in 2020 it's just not going to happen and the state's yeah. been trending to the right there's no way that that's going to end up being the case if we look at for example you know let's look at pennsylvania the state has been trending to the right as well and so more than likely in the scenario i mean it would probably be a likely margin of victory now michigan is the only one that's a little bit iffy because it's voting to the right of the nation by 1.7 percentage points so maybe it's like teetering on the line of likely to lean i'd probably put it in the lean column for now but that's probably a fair categorization of where it could be and now we're kind of looking at these uh, Biden plus six states or more from 2020, those being New Mexico, Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire, and Maine at large. I mean, if Trump's winning the popular vote by 3.2 and, you know, New Mexico's voting 6.8% to the left of the nation, you know, it's a little interesting because right now, yeah, we clearly see it here voting to the left by 6.3%. So if Trump's winning the popular vote by 3.2, it's about only a three-point victory in new mexico but if the state is trending to the right which i suspect it will due to the border and hispanics that puts new mexico in a really weird spot because that basically makes it way more competitive than what people are talking about and what's quite interesting is that if you actually look at my moving average for uh, new mexico it's actually within a single percentage point right now again we have very limited data because not a lot of people have been polling in the state really but we do see that trump is in fact really close to winning there and undecideds have dropped massively over the past couple of days and all the third party candidates are effectively at zero percent right now and third parties will probably hurt harris even more so that really puts a question mark on the state but i'd say right now it's probably a lean margin you have you know the albuquerque area is kind of pushing you know the state to the left so that might be the reason why i'll have it in the lean column but it realistically could be a tilt democrat or even tilt republican state for that matter it is very possible for that to actually be the case now virginia this one's interesting because it's been Bang. moving to the left, but Glenn Youngkin became the governor in 2021. He's kind of terraformed a state. He has a 60% approval rating there, and he's fairly conservative, actually. So I'm kind of surprised he even has that approval rating there. And the polling data, which usually is, you know, about one to two points off, has Harris, I mean, within a margin of error, essentially, about a three-point win. And when we look at our average for Virginia, we actually have the race very close there. Uh, both candidates did gain in the past, you know, day or so. 
But, I mean, Harris and Trump are neck and neck in the state. She's literally up by half a point. So, I'd say maybe it's actually going to be fairly competitive. I'd probably give it to Harris right now because of that Nova area. But Trump may possibly be doing far better in Virginia than people are actually expecting right Don't now. Don't worry. I'm telling y'all. It's going to be some history made. I believe it's going to be some history made now. I'm, I'm going to just throw it out there now. Now, Minnesota, I think, is going to continue to trend to the left. This is the state where Harris is doing the best in the average. I mean, she actually gained in the last uh, couple of days. I mean, she's pulling at 46.8. Trump is at 42.1. So she's leading the average by 4.7. And no undecided voters practically went to Harris. It's a lot of Kennedy support that actually kind of went to Harris uh, looking at the average here. So I'd say it probably does go in the lean column for Harris. I mean, that, you know, liberal, you know, Minneapolis area is probably going to really help her out in the state there. Yeah. Nebraska's second. I mean, it did vote to the left of the nation by 2.2%. So, and I feel like when you redraw that district for Republicans, it probably will trend a point back to the right. So if Trump's winning the popular vote by 3.2%, that is probably going to be a lean Republican margin right now. And looking at New Hampshire, this is also going to be fairly interesting because our moving average actually has Trump up in New Hampshire. And we even had to get rid of a poll because it fell out of the average. And Trump is actually up by quite a bit right now. Uh, for whatever reason, the third party candidates gained while Kennedy fell, which is really weird. Uh, but yeah, so Trump's actually up in our average in New Hampshire. And what's quite funny is that we're literally being as fair as possible and actually cutting the electorate lead for Republicans here by half. And even when you do that, Harris is still down in New Hampshire. So, and the state's very anti incumbent, it's very anti war. So, I may give it to Trump right now. I'd say maybe Trump is favored in New Hampshire. You did have a poll right after the dropout before all this response bias came into the polling data that Trump was up in New Hampshire by about a point with similar vote shares as to what I have right now. And Kennedy was even polling in the teens. And I have Kennedy at 12%. Maybe Kennedy's support here was just so high with the previous aggregate that maybe he just would have taken away a bunch of support from Harris and you would have seen like a nine point victory in the state of New Hampshire for Trump, which would have been really fascinating there. Now, Maine at large is interesting because we do see a, you know, right now Harris did really gain. We had to drop a poll out of the aggregate. Uh, there was two polls out of University of New Hampshire Survey Center, but we had to remove it uh, because it basically expired pretty much today. And now we see Harris did pick up some steam there and will probably stay there until they update the polling data. But Harris is only up by a little bit less than three. So I'd say maybe Harris does get it right now. It's been trending to the left. It's a pretty interesting state. And with ranked choice voting, maybe Harris is favored in this state. And so right now, guys, the race is Trump's to win. I mean, he's at 317. He's winning, you know, all the swing states besides Michigan and New Hampshire by, you know, double digit margins, not double digits, but, you know, mid to, you know, high single digit margins, which is very fascinating because Trump really, you know, won these states not by a lot in 2016 or really struggled in them. And it kind of shows that Harris is really not the one really winning right now. I mean, it's just not true, guys. I mean, if we average out all the polls that have D plus 11, D plus 7, D plus 6 electorates, which make no sense, even the electorate in 2008 was not that blue, by the way. The electorate... The last one? The last one was uh, 312 to 226 blue. Yeah. So we got from three, that was a... Th 317 now we it, and the last one was 312 you know overall like i told y'all too big to rig man it has to be too big to rig and that's what we, we you know that we, we believe history is going to be done um on this map in 2024 this upcoming election you guys in 2008 was like d plus three or four like it was never been that blue in the 21st century it wouldn't make sense for that to be the case so now you have trump up by 3.3 percent in the popular vote essentially and kennedy's endorsement may play a big factor into this and if he gets the lion's share of kennedy's support 
Trump may be pulling at over 50% and this race may be a way bigger victory for him than most political pundits are, you know, forecasting out there. And and for, you know, all of those you who look at 538 or RCP as an honest, you know, data source, I'd say 538 is kind of being really shady because if we go to 538, I mean, they're letting in anybody into the average. And, you know, obviously SoCal Strategies, which is the pollster I use, is not a nobody pollster, but like you're, you're but it's a lot of shade going on too man it's it's ridiculous they're talking about harris having a 3.6 percentage point lead it's ridiculous like really ridiculous and they completely just removed kennedy out of the average like they shouldn't have done that they should have seen where his support would have they're drinking uh we don't know who's conducting it they're they're, they're sipping on uh yeah that 70 percent uh, uh alcohol 70 percent yeah, you, you take a sip out of it and you choke. It doesn't go down smooth at all. As soon as you take a sip out of it, you get the choking and coughing. 70% alcohol, y'all. Would have gone because it would have been nice to be able to track that. And we're going to be the only, you know, aggregator that actually tracks this in real time to see where his support goes to so we can back people's arguments and they want to reference our you know basically our aggregate and it, if for whatever reason we end up getting this race right in terms of averaging out all the polling data and kennedy's support goes to trump will be a lot more credible because we would have been able to see okay kennedy's support went to trump and you could make a valid case okay you know Kennedy basically gave Trump a landslide victory. I mean, it's very possible that that could be the case because if he's already leading by three and, you know, Trump gets 3%, you know, that's going to put Trump at above 50. And at that point, it would practically be impossible for Harris to win the Electoral College. And what I think is kind of interesting about 538 as well is kind of really annoying me because you have their new model which took them about a month to complete they have a thousand simulations and i want you guys to see something because i don't know what they're doing to run these simulations i don't know what in the world they're doing to run these but harris winning 527 electoral votes is not going to happen trump is there's no hmm. real scenario in the whole wide world that Harris wins all the states in the United States except Alabama, or only a few, or wins most of the states in the country. Alcohol. Same goes for Trump. Trump is not going to get over 400 electoral college votes. You could make a realistic argument for him to get 347. Like, this is actually within realm of possibility, especially with him leading by three in the popular. I can vote. see it. But I for him to it. even be getting over 373 or like three, that's a little bit of a stretch now. I'd say that Trump's ceiling was 361. Uh, which was basically Minnesota, New Hampshire, uh, New Mexico, uh, New Hampshire, Maine, you know, Virginia, and New Jersey in his column. Like that was basically his ceiling. Like Trump pretty much almost hit his ceiling with Biden on the top of the ticket, pretty much. That's really what you saw. But right now, Trump is really going out here and just completely like blowing out Harris in the swing states. Like realistically, this is not a close race because in the places where it matters, she he's killing her in the places where the race matters or at least really decides the winner. He's blowing her out by quite a bit in, in the states. And you're talking about a model that has Harris getting even over like 330? Like her best case scenario is the 306 map and winning North Carolina. I mean, that's about it. That's the most she could do in an even realistic scenario. Uh, there's no way she's getting over 320 electoral votes. Like it's just not happening. And if you look at their modeling, I mean, their popular vote margin, they have Harris winning the popular vote by four points. That makes no sense. Trump is not going to get 45%. He's never even gotten below 46% in the national popular vote. Like that just doesn't work. That doesn't make any sense. You're talking about, if you look at their state margins, they have North Carolina voting to the left of Georgia 
And their tilt margins, even in a best case scenario for Harris right now, like she, like, yeah, she could win North Carolina, but she probably wouldn't even get within two or three points of North Carolina. And so apparently Pennsylvania is going to be the same margin for Harris as it was for Biden, but somehow Wisconsin's going to be bluer, but Michigan stays the same, but Florida's going to be a four point victory and Trump only improves in Texas by 0.1%. But Trump does better in New Hampshire, but does worse in Minnesota, but actually does slightly better in Ohio, in Iowa, but is winning Maine by less than 2020 in Virginia, but the New Mexico margin stays the same, but somehow he's doing 0.1% better there. He's improving in Colorado and Oregon, but not in Wisconsin kansas is the same margin as last time like this doesn't make any sense any sense at all this makes no sense at all Drunk. these state margins are ridiculous utah r plus 21 really trump won the state by about 20 and if the state popular vote or the national popular vote is going to move to the right by quite a bit it is not going to be a 20 point victory it's not going to be so this model makes no sense at Drunk. all Drunk. Clearly makes zero sense at all. I don't understand this whatsoever. So apparently Harris is going to hold on to Biden's margins in Maryland. Like this makes no sense. Like what simulations are they even running here? Like <laughs> Trump realistically has like a 5% chance to win Minnesota, Massachusetts, not like a 1% chance. Like, he technically has multiple paths because if he's getting, like, 30% of the black vote, which there's a non-zero chance of that, I mean, he's definitely got more paths to, to winning Massachusetts than this. Like, I don't understand what modelings they're, they're, they're doing here. And let's say, okay, maybe that is a little bit of a hot take. Let's go to Florida. So you're telling me that Harris has the opportunity to win Florida by 28 points? Are you kidding me? Uh -uh. And tr Trump winning Florida by this much that I'm showing you is more realistic than Harris even winning it by this much. Like, there is no universe where Harris even wins Florida by even more than three points. Like, I don't understand what they're doing with this model. I, I really don't understand. Like, I Drunk. I Drunk, drunk, drunk. Some of these that they are drinking, drinking, drinking. Oh, I'm drinking. actually getting the polls, and I'm basically applying a, a target electorate, which I think is fair, and weighing all of the polling numbers. So we eliminate the polling bias from the averages, and you get something that I think is pretty realistic. Like, I don't understand what these people at 538 are doing. I really don't understand. But guys, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe. Oh, yeah, huge shout out to On Point Politics, man. Link in the description box down below. You've seen 312 on our last one, 317 in this one. Um, But again, things are going to change. We are still waiting for that debate. You know, um, big things are happening, man. And it's breaking news every single day. We don't know what to expect, man. So prayers to these fellas, man, to this ticket. Prayers to this Trump advance ticket, man. Um, you know, they are against the system. They are fighting for you and I. They are fighting against this corrupt system. So we don't know what to expect um, any day from now, you guys. We do not know what to expect. Um, and then with this RFK Jr. endorsement, you know, we expect things to get even crazier. You know, so prayers, but... We got to go out and vote, man. We got to do our job. We can't get complacent. I know y'all say this and that about the polls, this and that about these map uh, predictions. But, hey, you know, we got to put it out there. But I love you guys. Let me know what y'all think of this. Make sure you go down below um, and check out On Point Politics. Hit that subscribe button to my my, my man's channel. Um, tell him you've seen him on OK Rick. Show him some love for me. Does an amazing job and drops amazing videos every single day, bringing amazing updates. So we will be using uh, him as another reliable source. But hey, I love you guys. And I'll catch you on the next one, man. Peace and love, y'all.